Hi, my name is Avi Loeb, and I'm a professor of astronomy at Harvard University and the director of the Institute for Theory and Computation there. Welcome to the porch of my home, where I enjoy going out at night and looking at the stars. In fact, recently I wrote a book entitled How Did the First Stars and Galaxies Form? published by Princeton University Press. And when I step out to the porch at night and look at the sky, I often wonder how we humans are too preoccupied with ourselves. There is much more to the universe than meets the eyes here on Earth. A couple of years ago, my family and I visited the remote island of Tasmania, off the shore of Australia, known for its unspoiled beauty. We drove to Cradle Mountain and settled in. When the night set in, I realized that we have no internet connectivity, and so I could not check my email or check new papers that appeared on the astrophysics archive. I had no choice but to step out of the cabin and look around. I looked up and saw the dark sky with no city lights on the horizon. And then the beautiful, glorious Milky Way galaxy stretched across the sky. I stared at the Milky Way for hours. And I realized at a deeper level that what we astronomers talk about really exists out there. I get paid to think about the sky. One might think that there are no practical implications to such an occupation. If an engineer builds a bridge and miscalculates the strain on the bridge, people might get hurt. But if I miscalculate the orbits of stars in a galaxy, there are no practical implications. The engineer would be the first to correct this naive notion. The bridge is designed based on Newton's laws of motion, which were derived by looking at the planets orbiting the Sun. And even Einstein's theory of general relativity, which was designed to describe the universe at large, is necessary in order to achieve the precision required in GPS systems for navigation. But there is a bigger context to all of this. The universe is the biggest environment surrounding us. And we better get an informed view of this environment in order to get the correct perspective about our daily life. The universe is expanding, just like a balloon. And as it's expanding, the galaxies recede away from each other. We can also reverse the movie and go backward in time. And as we go back in time, the universe gets denser. There must have been a point in time when the universe was denser than the Milky Way galaxy, and potentially going even farther in time, was denser than the Sun. Therefore, the Sun and the Milky Way galaxy must have formed at some time late in the evolution of the universe. When did the first stars and galaxies form in the expanding universe? This is the topic of my book. We have a photo album of the universe. We have an image of the universe when it was only 400,000 years old, an infant. We also have plenty of images of galaxies starting when the universe was a billion years old up till the present time, 14 billion years after the Big Bang. But we are missing some pages in this photo album. And over the next decade, a variety of instruments, telescopes and observatories will be constructed in order to complete our photo album of the universe. The image of an adult is not simply a scaled-up version of the image 
of a fetus. And the era that we are primarily interested in is just when the very first galaxies and stars formed in the universe. The study of the first stars and galaxies is an ideal research area for young people. My book describes the basic physical principles and processes of the formation of the first galaxies. To paraphrase Robert Frost, this is a road that has not been taken. The universe was not designed with us in it. Early on, the sun did not exist and life was not possible. And far into the future, life will not be possible either. Let's go to my office and I'll show you something. Every time an American president delivers the State of the Union address, I imagine what it might be like to hear a description of the state of the universe surrounding the Union. This might be interesting whenever astronomers reach a milestone in their understanding of the state of the universe. And we actually reached such a milestone recently. We now know that in recent history, the universe is not only expanding, but its expansion is accelerating with time. In other words, a galaxy that is far away from us is receding from us at an ever-increasing speed. And in the distant future, such a galaxy will move away from us faster than light. And we won't be able to see what is going on in that galaxy. So in the very distant future, we will be left alone. The only galaxy that will remain visible to us in the very distant future is the Milky Way galaxy. But the Milky Way galaxy is heading on a collision course with its sister galaxy, Andromeda. And the two will come together to make one big galaxy within only a few billion years before the Sun dies. Let's have a look and see what theoretical simulations forecast for the merger between Andromeda and the Milky Way. Here we see Andromeda approaching the Milky Way and the distribution of gas around them. On the right hand side we see the distribution of stars. After the collision the stars will be spread in a roughly spherical blob around the center of Milcomeda. And so the night sky will change dramatically. Instead of seeing a strip of stars stretched across the sky as we see for the Milky Way galaxy, we will see stars distributed all over the sky for Milcomeda. And the Sun itself will be pushed out from its current location due to this merger. Milcomeda will be the only galaxy that is visible to us in the very distant future, tens of billions of years from now because all other galaxies in the universe will be pulled away from us by the cosmic expansion and will eventually exit from our horizon. And so future generations of astronomers will have to believe us that the Big Bang really happened because there will be no evidence for it. For more details, you're welcome to read my book and visit my website.